The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a few minutes, someone may telephone your home to ask you a question. No, it won't be the FBI, but it may happen like this. Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on now? Why, uh, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? It's This Is Your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Sure I do. My good friends, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Uh, just last Wednesday, my equitable representative was telling me about a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. That's a great life insurance plan. So naturally, I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in just 15 minutes, I'll give you full information about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight. FBI file, the used baby racket. When a great tragedy occurs somewhere in the world and a thousand people are killed, we read about it and we're sorry. But actually, we do not understand what we're reading. Because it's impossible for the human mind to picture a thousand people being killed at one time. But if we hear about one man being burned to death in a fire, we cringe. Not because we think it's a greater tragedy than the death of a thousand people. But because we can put ourselves in the man's place. And really understand that one single death. Now, for that reason, it may not strike you as horrible that in 1946 in these United States, there were more than a million six hundred thousand major crimes committed. None of us can realize what that number of crimes represents. But perhaps you can grasp the current crime wave statistics better when you hear that there was a job done by a criminal in the United States last year every 18 and a half seconds. In other words, since you first heard my voice, there have been three major crimes committed. The night file opens in a sloppy two-room apartment on New York's east side. It is early afternoon, and Nora Beekman has just finished listening to some records on her brand new phonograph as the doorbell rings. All right, I'm coming. Oh, you. Hi, Harry. Hello, Nora. How's Mom? Okay, she's just about rid of her cold. Oh, that's good. See, what are you doing here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? You working for Joe anymore? Oh, the cops slowed all the bookmakers in town. So you're out of a job again, huh? I'll find something. I hope so. Uh, here, I brought your mail up. Oh, is that for me? Yeah. It's a package from Tommy. Maybe some jewelry. I understand all the soldiers in Germany send home lots of jewelry. Oh. What is it? How do you like that? Everybody else gets jewelry. My jerky husband sends me a record. Well, let's hear it. Mm. Maybe it's a secret message. Hello? Hello, darling. I'm in the Red Cross Clubhouse in Berlin. That's your master's voice. And I just wanted to tell you that I'm very much in love with you. But that's old news, huh? I said it so often you must be getting a little tired of hearing it. But you better get used to it, honey. Because you'll be hearing me say I love you for the rest of your life. 
I got some other news for you besides that, though. I'm coming home to you and the baby. Huh? Isn't that great news? Won't oh, you? that's great. He's coming home. Well, what's wrong with that, Nora? Nothing, nothing at all, except he's coming home to me and the baby. So? So do you see a baby anyplace around here? Hey, you're right. Where is Sonny? I met a woman in the park one day a couple of weeks ago. She thought Sonny looked so cute in the carriage. Yeah? She told me she couldn't have a baby herself, and she was trying to adopt one. Well, a lot of rich people do that. Well, they told her that she'd have to wait a year before she could adopt a baby. What's this got to do with Sonny? I sold him to her. You what? I sold her the baby for $1,000. Oh, Oh, I don't care about that. No, I gotta have a baby to show Tommy when he gets here. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, you're a big genius. What do I do now? I don't know. Get out the way you got in. I can't. I gotta have a baby. Hey, might work. What might work? I got an idea. Is this the residence of Mrs. Martin Schuyler? That's right. Are you Mrs. Schuyler? Yes, I am. Well, Mrs. Schuyler, I'm from the FBI. Yes, the, F- the FBI? Well, what do you want here? May I come in, Mrs. Schuyler? Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Please do. Oh, thanks. Uh, sit down anywhere, Mr. Uh... Uh, Hanover is my name, Mrs. Schuyler. Why are you here, Mr. Hanover? I'll get right to the point. Mrs. Schuyler, you bought a baby three weeks ago. How did you... I don't understand how that concerns you, Mr. Hanover. Unfortunately for you, it does concern the FBI. Oh. That baby was kidnapped. Kidnapped? But I I bought it Yes, I know what you're going to say. You bought it from the baby's mother. Yes, that's right. But she wasn't the child's mother. She was the baby's nurse. Her nurse? That's right, Mrs. Schuyler. The girl confessed everything. That's how we got your name and address. Now, there are two things that you can do. What are they? You can give me the child, and I'll return it to the parents, and no one will ever know a thing about it. I see. Or you can have the girl put in jail by fighting the case. In that event, of course, there would be a lot of publicity. Oh, no, no, no. I I don't want any publicity in this matter. Well, I think you're being very smart, Mrs. Skyler. This way, no one will ever know that this whole thing happened. Yes, it's much better that way. I'll get the baby for you now. Yes, if you will. Uh, incidentally... What happens to my thousand dollars? Afraid there's no way of recovering that, Mrs. Schuyler. Nurse spent that money immediately after getting it. I see. And now may I please have the child? It's getting late for the baby to be up, and I promise I'd see to it that it slept in its own bed tonight. Yes, of course. Well, come along. The baby's room is down the hall. <laughs> Nora, 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 will you take this kid? Oh, you got him back. That's wonderful, Harry. Kiss him. Come to Mama. Uh, well, now you're all set. Gee, thanks, Harry. Am I a real genius now? Or? I'll say you are. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years. Uh, just let me handle all your business, Nora. You got it. This dame was a real pushover for the story. Well, anybody would be. It's a real good story. I bought one of those wallets like Cary Grant used in that picture with Ingrid Bergman. Mm -hmm. Well, all I did was flash it, say I was with the FBI, stick it back in my pocket again. Quiet! I almost had to laugh. It was so easy. Now do you see why I got rid of the kid? This goes on all day, sometimes all night. I was going crazy. Wait till I give him this bottle. Yeah, uh, kids do take a lot of attention. You rest a couple of minutes. I won't have an hour's quiet now that he's back home. You wanted him back. Don't blame me. I'm not blaming you, Harry. I've just gotten to hate all that noise. Having to stay home every night, changing his diaper, making his formula. When's uh, Tommy coming back, Nora? Oh, I played the rest of the record while you were gone. He just said soon, no date. Well, uh, how'd you like to get another thousand for Sonny? How can I? I just told you, Tommy's coming home. Besides, I just met that Mrs. Schuyler by accident. What do you want me to do? Put a sign on the baby carriage saying this baby is for sale, $1,000? Whoa, hold it for a second. A friend of mine, his old man's a janitor in one of those orphan places. What about it? 
Think he'd want to buy Sunny? No, 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 no. But the orphan place is getting letters all the time from people just looking for kids to adopt. So? So we have the old geezer steal some of the letters. That'll be our sucker list. Oh, Harry, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Okay. I'll get in touch with the guy tomorrow. Then we start peddling the kid again. Meanwhile, in the New York office of the FBI, Special Agent Charles Watkins is seated beside the desk of Special Agent Jim Taylor. Taylor has just finished a phone conversation. Thank you. Goodbye. Hey, you're on that phone a long time, Jim. Sounded like a complaint. It was a complaint. That was a Mr. Martin Schuyler, and he was protesting about an agent who came to his house while he was out of town on a business trip. Oh? Who was the agent? He was obviously an imposter. Well, what's the story? Well, it seems that about a month ago, Mrs. Schuyler met some woman in Central Park and bought her baby. She what? Yes. Pretty shocking that some people are so anxious to adopt a child and so impatient that they, well, they go into the black market for a baby. How low can a human being get? Pretty low, judging from this. Well, what was this so-called agent's game? It was pretty clever. He told Mrs. Schuyler that the baby had been kidnapped and that the FBI would return the baby to its real home without any publicity. Which suited Mrs. Schuyler fine, I suppose. Oh, naturally. Oh, she was sorry about having to give up the child, but according to Mr. Schuyler, she was happy that there wouldn't be anything in the papers about it. You know, Jim, I should feel sorry for the Schuylers, but I really don't. No, neither do I. To a great extent, they got what was coming to them. But that doesn't catch the criminals. Exactly. And that's our job. Well, Jim, what's the first move? Well, I guess the first thing to do is go out and see the Skylers. Is there any other record you want to hear, Harry? No, I think that'll hold me for a while. Okay. Don't you just love that phonograph? Yeah, yeah, real good machine. I bought it with part of that first thousand dollars I got for Sonny. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of the people you, you, you sold the kid to this time? A uh, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Buchanan. Oh, yeah. Plenty of dough, huh? Loaded. She gave me the thousand like it was a buck. She's going to keep calling the baby Sonny. Oh, that's nice. She asked me what to call him, so I told her that even though the baby's name was Thomas Beekman, Jr., I always called him Sonny. Hey, you told her the kid's right name? Yeah. Why? Well, I hate to break this news to you suddenly, but you know what we're doing is frowned upon by the police. Yeah, I know. So what? So giving your right name to people you clip is one way that they can check on you. Oh, don't be silly. Last woman didn't check, did she? Neither will this one. Well, I hope not, but I think it's about time I went out and got her little meal ticket back again. But it's only been a week since I sold her. Oh. Who can that be? Hello? Hiya, darling. Tommy. Yeah, that's right, honey. You surprised? Sure. Where are you? At the airport. I, uh, I got a chance to fly home, and, well, I, I wanted to see you and the baby so much, I, I took it. Oh, that, that's wonderful, dear. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll be home in about 20 minutes. All right, Tommy, I'll, I'll be here. Okay. I have a big kid waiting for me, will yeah. you? Bye, honey. Bye. Well, with Tommy, you'll be here in 20 minutes. Well, I guess the honeymoon is over. What do you mean? Well, we can't go on selling the kid with Tommy home. What am I going to do, Harry? Look, uh, you got much in the apartment that you really want? Well, besides the phonograph and my records, nothing. Why? Well, I was thinking. You know, the cops might be able to check back after we get the kid from the Buchanan. So? So why don't we just keep going? And if they do check back, let them check with Tommy. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now, a special message for men and women who are on the way up, for people who are confidently looking forward to the day when their friends will be patting them on the back and saying, Congratulations, Joe. I hear you just got promoted to a wonderful new job. Say, that's great news. You're going places. Do you expect that to happen to you in the next year or two? Well, the Equitable Society has designed a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. 
for people like you who expect to be earning more money three years from now. Mr. Cross, I have a hunch that applies to me. Let's hear more about this plan. Well, this equitable society plan for men on the way up has these three advantages. First, it gives you and your family needed protection right now. Second, this equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. Third, this equitable plan is flexible at all times, can expand or contract as you see fit. The more I hear about this plan, the better I like it. How can I get the whole story? Just ask your Equitable Society representative about the Equitable Plan for People on the Way Up. Phone him as soon as possible or send a postcard, care of this station, to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, the used baby racket. Because there are so many families in the United States who want to adopt a baby, the process of adoption often takes more than a year. And if you are one of those whose name is on a waiting list, do yourself and your prospective child a favor and wait until your name is called. Do not patronize the black market in babies. For as tonight's case in the files of your FBI proves, if you go into the black market, you are leaving yourself open to the depraved minds of criminals. In addition to that, you are trafficking in human beings, and thus... You make yourself a criminal. Tonight's file continues in the New York office of your FBI. Special Agent Jim Taylor has just returned from investigating a complaint. He finds Special Agent Watkins waiting for him. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Jim. Anybody call while I was out? No, Jim, not a thing. What's the story at the Buchanan's? They followed almost exactly the same procedure there as they did in the Schuyler case. The man posed as an FBI agent again, huh? That's right. And from the description Mrs. Buchanan gave me, it has to be the same man. How much did she pay for the baby? A standard rate, $1,000. Guess that must be the ceiling price for a human being. Mm -hmm. However, Mrs. Buchanan was at least a little smarter than the first customer. How do you figure that? When the imposter arrived and said he was from the FBI and that he wanted to return the baby to its rightful parents, Mrs. Buchanan said that she didn't believe him. And she refused to give up the baby? Well, she said she wanted to call the FBI to check whether or not he was a legitimate agent. What happened then? He slugged her, then locked her in a closet. Mm Mm-hmm. And when she came to, the baby was gone. That's it. But we have more to work on this time than we did after Mrs. Schuyler was swindled. Oh, in what way? Well, for one thing, Mrs. Buchanan found out the right name of the child. How did she do that? Well, the woman who sold the baby told her, quite by accident, that the child's name was Thomas Beekman, Jr. There must be plenty of Beekmans in New York, if that's the right name. We've got another clue that should isolate the area where they live. Well, let's have it. Well, Mrs. Buchanan remembered that the woman told her that one of the reasons she was glad to sell the baby is that now it would be able to get some sleep. She said the elevated trains kept the baby awake. Hey, there's only one elevated train still running in New York. Mm, That's what I meant when I said the area was isolated for it. I think I'll ask the telephone company to check and see if they've got any Thomas Beekman listed on 3rd Avenue. Good. While you're doing that, I'll get in touch with the milk company, see if they're delivering any milk to a Mrs. Thomas Beekman. I'll check back here with you in half an hour. Okay, Charlie, let's go to work. Is your name Thomas Beekman? Yeah, that's right. Who are you? I'm from the FBI, Mr. Beekman. Here are my credentials. From the FBI? And something has happened to my wife and baby. Where are they? Uh, calm down, Mr. Beekman. May I come in? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Come on in. Thanks. I've been going crazy waiting. I was just going to phone the police. I see you're in uniform, Mr. Beekman. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm still in the service. I just got back from Germany today. Uh-huh. What ship did you come back on? No ship. I, I flew back. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? 
Yes, I think I do, Mr. Beacon. You don't in the least resemble the man I'm looking for. The man you're looking for? Here? Hey, what is this? Mr. Beekman, when did you last see your wife? I haven't seen her since I got back. As soon as the plane landed, I called her from the airport. And she was here? Yeah, and then I told her I'd be home in 20 minutes. When I got here, she and the baby was gone. Is your baby's name Thomas Beekman, Jr.? Yes, sir, that's right. Is your wife blonde, rather small, and very pretty? Yes, sir, that's Nora. And do you by any chance know a man about, oh, six feet tall, slim, good-looking, with blonde hair and a light mustache? That sounds like Nora's brother, Harry, but huh? tell me what's happened. Well, well, this is rather difficult to tell you, but... Now, Mr. Beekman, your wife and her brother have gone into the business of selling your baby. No, that can't be. I felt the same way when I heard about it the first time. And where's my baby now? I'm sorry, but I, I don't know. He might be with your wife, or... She might have sold him again by this time. Oh, no. No, I... I can't believe that Nora would do that. Mr. Beekman, let's try to do something that'll bring your baby back to you. Now, tell me, what is your brother-in-law's full name? Harry Jackson, but I... I don't know where he lives, though. I see. Do you mind if I take a look around the apartment? No, 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 sir. Go, go right ahead. Thanks. Maybe I can find something here that'll lead us to your wife and brother and your baby. <laughs> Nora, give that kid a bottle or anything that'll keep him quiet. Now you see what I used to go through. Uh, Here, Sonny, drink this. Funny, isn't it? What's funny? You give a baby a bottle and he stops making noise. You give a grown-up a bottle and that's when he starts making noise. That's funny? Sorry, it amused me. Don't get sarcastic with me. Oh, shut up. You're getting on my nerves. I'll get on your nerves even more if I don't do anything but sit around this apartment all day and all night. Relax. The only thing that can spoil everything now is we get caught by the cops. We'll stay undercover for a week or so, and then you can go out and call on the next sucker. But do you think it's safe here? Why don't we get out of New York? Look, all the names on our sucker list are right here in New York. If we leave town, we've got to get another list. But how do you know we're safe in this apartment? It belongs to a legitimate friend of mine who went to South America. He won't be back till June. Okay. You're the genius. How many times do you think we can sell, Sonny, before your friend gets back? Well, how do I know? We'll sell him as many times as we can. <laughs> find out, Johnny. Well, Jim, I waited over at the office of that pediatrician that used to treat the Beekman child. Yeah. But he said he hadn't heard from Mrs. Beekman in three weeks. I didn't suppose she'd take too good a care of the baby. Oh, I left our number with him. He'll call us if he does hear from her. Oh, good. I assume you didn't have any luck either. No, none at all. You remember I found that bottle of medicine in the bathroom cabinet at the Beekman? Yeah, the one that said take as directed? That's the one. Well, I called the drugstore, gave them the number of the prescription. They told me what it was, but they said that lots of babies take those pills. They're just vitamin pills. Jim, there must be some clue as to where they went. Well, I hope there is, but I can't think of what it would be. All we know is they're probably still somewhere in New York. Yeah, every check we've made would seem to indicate they are. But what makes you so sure they still got the baby with them? Jackson went back to the Buchanan apartment to get the child, didn't he? If he didn't want it, he wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I guess you're right, Jim. Well, maybe the police will come up with a clue. They've sent out an alarm. Every policeman in the city is looking for them. Well, that should keep them from moving around very much. Yeah. As long as they have the baby with them, they'll be staying home nights taking care of him. You can be sure of that. Charlie, why didn't I think of that before? Think of what? Hand me that phone. I've got an idea. Well, where have you been? Oh, just went around the corner for some cigarettes. What'd they do? Make them for you by hand? You've been gone two hours. I got tired of waiting for you to come back. You got tired of waiting for me. Oh, I know it takes time, Nora. I just needed some cigarettes. Is that a crime or something? Okay, okay, okay. How'd you make out with Mrs. Atwater? She's going to buy some. How much? She was wearing a brand new mink coat, so I jacked up the price. We got 1500 this time. Good for you. I meet her tomorrow morning at 11. She said she'd pay for Sonny in cash. Hey, who can that be? I don't know. Oh, maybe it's one of George's friends who doesn't know he's out of town. 
Good afternoon. Mrs. Beekman here. Mrs. Who are you? I'm from the FBI. Here are my credentials. And these are genuine, Mr. Jackson. How do you know my name? And what do you do? Step back, Jackson. Let me come in. Who is it, Harry? It's the FBI, Mrs. Beekman. Well, I'm glad to see your child asleep in the carriage. I was afraid you might have sold him again before we got here. Say, gee, man, tell me one thing, will you? What do you want to know? How'd you find us here? We were almost stymied until I remembered that all babies need one thing. What's that? Diapers. So I called every diaper service in New York. One of them told me that Mrs. Beekman had moved and they gave me this new address. What? And uh, speaking of addresses, Mrs. Beekman, I have an idea you and your brother will have the same address for some time to come. Prison. Harry Jackson and Mrs. Beekman were tried and convicted and are now serving long terms in prison. When they finish, Jackson will serve an additional five years in a federal penitentiary for having impersonated a member of the FBI. And in that manner, the sordid criminal careers of two inhuman people were brought to a finish by your FBI. Tonight's case from the files is indicative of one thing, and that is that there are no depths to which the criminal is incapable of sinking in the commission of a crime. There are no bounds of decency which the criminal recognizes. And in his own tortured mind, there's nothing wrong in stealing from someone who is not quite as cunning as he is. Only the shrewd deserve to survive is his motto. But what he never realizes until too late is that the forces of law and order are shrewd and cunning themselves. And, like your FBI, utterly relentless. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. If you're what President Thomas I. Parkinson of the Equitable Society describes as a man with faith in his own future and the future of America, then you'll surely want to learn more about the Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. Exactly how much will this plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How much protection does it give me right now? Your Equitable Representative can work that out in two minutes. Does this plan offer me desirable options when my income increases? You bet it does. Your Equitable Man will give you all the facts on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Find him in the phone book under Equitable Society or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Curious Patient. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's broadcast was directed by William M. Sweet. The music was composed by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your F. FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Curious Patient on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.